A recent trend has emerged with indie designers I am calling the Dribble Design System. Essentially, it's the same set of 10 fonts with relaxed element density and overused rounded corners. Unfortunately, many companies integrate the Dribble Design System into their product. The best example I can think of is DoorDash. The companies that recognize this tomfoolery of UI design are Apple, Google Material Design, and notably IBM, who has embraced their lack of rounded corners and reduced color palette. These design systems were built with the user in mind. The same thing was done at Amazon, so it makes you wonder why their mobile experience looks so terrible. Their design was centered not around branding, but on their products, which is why it looks so cluttered. It is why they have tiny fonts with weird coloration and holiday themes. They need to fit as many details, holiday references, and products onto your small screen so you can scroll. Let's go back to the Dribble design system. I saw a few Amazon redesigns on Dribble and found that many went with radical changes that I wouldn't think Amazon would implement. It doesn't look like the future because it's so difficult to believe a mega corporation driven by money would spend a good time rounding all its corners. It just isn't a priority. So for once, I ignored the Dribble design system and designed an app for Amazon that would be easy to implement with their existing design. The design system I'll be using is a Tailwind design system, which I know isn't a design system, but it's a great starting point for developing applications quickly. Alongside Tailwind, I'll be using Tabler icons because I can, and my own layout grids for mobile. I will provide links to all these, but two of these libraries aren't mine, and the grids I created are stolen from somewhere else. So yeah. First, I start with the app header and the bottom bar. The search bar looks ugly where it is, and there is no branding, so I decided to get rid of it for now. Most people scroll with their thumbs, so reaching the top of their phone screen can be cumbersome for a common task like searching. I like the secondary navigation showing the current shopping location. However, it could be condensed into the main navigation. After putting in the branding, I'll need an icon on the right to balance things out, so I chose the message center, which is essential for deals and notifications. I'll get to the other icon in a bit. The bottom bar looked okay for the most part. Still, it was difficult to identify the user symbol as it wasn't on the right side like most other apps, which is a no-no for familiarity. It also wasn't the user's profile picture. After fixing that, I removed the little menu bar as I barely use it, so it can go to the top bar. I also don't know what the menu is. Is it settings, categories, or support? Turns out, it's all of them. Like Apple did with Safari in a controversial decision, I put the search bar in an easy to reach position for critical shoppers such as myself. I kept the slideshow at the top as it's a common introduction to a cluttered shopping center, like a greeter at Best Buy. I opted to keep the cards, altering a few things. Firstly, increase the font size and weight for emphasis. Second, move the images to the top. Last, keep the same background colors for all cards except for unique cards such as deals slash offers, which I've highlighted with a red background. I feel that sections within a website should be emphasized differently, but the same goes for the Amazon app. Miraculously, all of the sections have a white background. I'll change the big offer background to red, along with theme, as that's the color that screams sale. Amazon also summarizes multiple products from a company with one image. Let's change that to multiple images in a marquee. I'll put the title on top, and instead of a badge saying the sale, let's have a gift ribbon for the holidays. I'll add a green background that could easily be white as well, but it'll be Christmas soon, and I don't want to disappoint the sandwich eating Caucasians. Instead of categories, I'll bring back the cards I built earlier, except with center descriptions and age ranges for better tailored buying. The last thing is the main navigation. We'll create a sidebar, but instead of text like the Amazon's website or images like the mobile app, we'll have icons because that makes more sense than both. I put all the same navigation links, allowing the menus to become submenus that scroll to the right when applicable, like Facebook. This cleans up central navigation while dividing the areas based on their category. Ironically, one of the categories of the navigation menu is called categories. The bottom right, as always, has user information. Nothing but dazzling, just familiar. That's it. It looks like a work in progress, but I haven't done anything radically different. I introduced opinionated styling where I could, but generally focused on fixing flawed execution of standard design principles. I also tried converting this design to dark mode, but as I mentioned before, Amazon can't ask all app vendors to create a dark versions of their photos, nor would that make sense. For example, here's what DJI's drones would look like on a dark background. The product must also be dark for it to fit, which isn't ideal. I tried fixing this with a white square, but ultimately it didn't fit in and made the design look terrible. I am HO. That's it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments on what could be improved or if any of my hot takes had flaws in them, as I'm always open to learning.